would you like to know how to diagnose and fix some of the problems that you're seeing in your data science, data engineering, and operations teams? Hi, my name is Jesse Anderson, and in this video I'm going to show you how to diagnose and fix some of the issues that you're seeing in your data teams. This video is the second in a series of four videos where I'm going through my book, Data Teams, and talking about some of the parts to it. This is one of the chapters that's in the book, and in this chapter, I compiled some of the most common problems I saw. As I started to go through and create the table of contents and start writing out the book, I went through and wrote down all of the most common problems that I saw, and I wanted to cover them. I wanted to show you, here are some common issues that you're going to see. And not just, I didn't just compile the list, I also gave specific suggestions in the book on how to fix these issues. Let's go through some of the sections that are in there. The first section is called stuck teams. Stuck teams are a very, very consistent issue with data teams. Stuck teams means that the team is not making any progress. Usually when I talk to a manager who's experiencing a stuck team, their, their team is telling them, perhaps in their daily scrum, perhaps in their retrospective, they keep on saying, we're going to get that done. We're going to get that done. But they also said that a month ago and a month before that, there is a consistent not getting anything done. The team is stuck. And in that section, I go through, here are some of the issues of why teams get stuck. The next section is underperforming teams. Underperforming teams, I think, are very common, where as I've talked to some data teams and some managers of data teams, and I say, do you have something in production? Tell me about that. What they'll tell me about is a system that is in production. However, it isn't actually generating the maximum amount of value. That underperforming teams means that they won't be, they're doing hello world level things that their idea of generating value was really just a really minimal amount of value creation rather than the maximum amount of value creation. And one of the worst things that I find with, especially for managers, is that the teams and organizations don't actually realize that they're underperforming. They don't look around and say, oh wow, we're doing hello world level things rather than we started out with a hello world thing. We had to start somewhere and we've gradually worked up to a point where we're doing some very advanced things. That's a consistent issue. And in that section, I, I share some reasons why that could be happening. The next section is about skill and ability gaps. Now, when we're looking at a team and there's a problem on the team, there could be several different sources of that problem. And the problem could actually exist in what's called a skill gap or an ability gap. Let me talk about what a skill gap is. A skill gap is when we're doing something and the skill is just within the reach of that person. They may, it may just be a lateral move, it may just be a question of time, it may just be a question of effort or resources, where to take this person, this individual contributor, and get them those skills is just a bit of time. That's a skill gap. Now, that's what's most commonly, most often talked about with big data systems, or if you read human resources sort of posts, that's what they're talking about. We just need to give them these skills. However, I saw something different and something very consistent, and I coined the term ability gap. What an ability gap means is that the skill is not within a person's reach. Where we have an individual and we have these skills that need to be done, in these ability gap sorts of situations, there is no amount of time, no amount of resources, nothing that can be done for that person to get to that level. And this is a, 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 a issue I see that's pretty common within teams. This is especially prevalent when teams are trying to migrate or switch. A common issue here is, for example, is a data warehouse team. The data warehouse team may have experience or skills with data and data warehouse technologies. However, there is a gap of the programming and distributed systems and other skills. Now, it's a, it's a common issue for those data warehouse teams to have that ability gap of not being able to get to the programming, to the distributed systems levels that need to happen. And this is not fair to either side. It's not fair to expect, 
expect an individual with an ability gap to get there, and it's not fair for the team to wait for that person with an ability gap. They'll be waiting forever, basically. So this section really goes deeply into that, and it's complemented by other sections within the book talking about these issues. The next section is out of whack ratios. Now there can be a, an issue where there is not enough or we're completely lacking one of our data teams. So as you heard and talked and thought about the three teams, you may think, oh wow, we don't have a data engineering team or we don't have an operations team, for example. That could be a total lack. Or what is uh, common as well is that we have a data engineering and we have a data science team However, there aren't enough data engineers relative to the data scientists. And as a direct result, we will have our data scientists doing things that they aren't really skilled or really efficient at doing. In that section, I talk about how we need to deal with that. And as a direct result, we, have, we can free up our staff to do things that are much more in their wheelhouse. Another section is called Project Failures and Silver Bullets. This is an issue where we have companies who move from one technology to another, one buzzword to another. And what they're doing is they're looking for that technology to save the farm, as it were. It's going to save the company, where the company doesn't operate very well, and just the act of putting this technology in place is going to save, or it's going to do this without any organizational change. And this is where this is an issue where managers don't want to look inward and they don't want to fix the management reasons why these projects keep on failing. And in that section, I wrote, go much deeper into what you need to do to prevent these project failures and these silver bullets from really uh, being the reason why we fail again with another technology. Another section is the Holy Grail. Holy Grails often represent the most complicated and sought after designs. This is what often happens when maybe a manager, maybe even an individual contributor will read a book, go to a conference talk, go to a webinar, and hear from a well-respected, well-known company, and they say, here's what we do. And what they do is they set off and they decide that they're going to copy that exactly. Now there's some very important pr problems with doing that. And the, the main issue is that they think that they can whole, wholesale copy an advanced organization's designs, architecture, value creation, and achieve those exact same results. What they're missing are some of the more foundational issues that need to be done first. And I go through that more in that section. The next one is about software or your data pipeline keeps on failing in production. This is a common issue where we have, it's usually a technical issue with our software products, perhaps it's our architecture, where we may have had people who thought or think that these know how these systems work in theory, but what they don't know is they don't know that they how they work in the real world. And this is a very different issue. There are theoretical things. This design works in theory. This architecture works in theory. This software works in theory. It may pass QA, but once we get into the real world, that's where we hit these issues. And what I want people to understand is that the real crucible for these systems is when we actually go into production. This is where we validate that this code, this architecture, and what we really need is that we need people who have that previous experience to be able to say, yes, this works. And I know this because I actually did this. This is a common issue that I talk about that in, in that section. We also need to figure out if our system can actually scale. Oftentimes these frameworks, these big data frameworks are promised to scale. However, if we don't do it right, even the most resilient the best system still can't scale because of the sorts of code or the sorts of architecture we put through it or the abuse that we put through it. Now that you've seen some of the issues for diagnosing and fixing these issues, I invite you to purchase and read my book, Data Teams, so that you can see what the fixes are and why you want to do those fixes.